Did you know that you can craft netherite into stairs? Or how about this official trick to make an infinite lava source? And today we're joined by the channel Block Facts to cover the 47 Minecraft block facts you possibly didn't know. And hey, YouTube told me straight up that absolutely zero people have subscribed using their nose. So if you're up to the challenge, park your schnoz on that red button down below. It's free and it helps out a ton. It's physically possible to explode a block of obsidian. Now, obviously you couldn't do this with regular TNT, no matter how many explode at once. But if you use this command to summon a prime piece of TNT with an explosion power of 72 or above, it'll be strong enough to destroy a piece of obsidian. This here is called invisible bedrock. And if you can't see what I'm talking about, that's kind of the point. Now this behaves much like the barrier block, except it's exclusive to the bedrock edition of Minecraft. And it was originally used in the game to create these world boundaries around old worlds. But those world boundaries didn't go past build height, so if you just built up high enough, you could walk over it. This cactus is 23 blocks tall, and what's even more impressive is that this cactus spawned naturally. Thanks to the Minecraft at Home research project, the community has discovered seeds you can load up in Java 1.14.4 and see this huge cactus. So if you need a bunch of green dye, I'd say this is a good start. In the snapshot 12w32a, we got a new block called Work in Progress. A catchy name, I know. But even unfinished, I'm sure any Minecraft veteran can notice that this eventually became what we call the beacon block. Though to get there, it had to go through four separate texture variations, which definitely lives up to the work in progress name after all. Turtle eggs are stronger than you think, because even though these eggs can't support the weight of the player or other mobs, they can support lanterns that are either placed above or below them. But it's worth noting that the lantern does look like it's floating in those cases, so maybe that's why they don't break. It was never there in the first place. A netherite beacon looks expensive, but how much would it cost? Well, all the ancient debris alone would be 5,900 four pieces. And all of those items would take up 92 and a quarter stacks and fill up nearly three and a half shulker boxes. Which makes this one by Wadz even more impressive. The reason that beds explode in the nether is because Notch was lazy. Well, that's an oversimplification. But he has gone on record saying that this is the easiest solution to whether or not the player should respawn in the other dimensions. And it's funny to think that just with that little decision, it made for an entirely new form of combat in the way of bed bombing. In case you didn't know, leaves in bedrock condition turn white when you leave them in the snow. But if you play that version and you never notice, that might not be your fault, since it's not an instant transition. And instead, it'll take some time in the tundra before it finally changes their tone. Bamboo grows fast, too fast in some cases. And as it is, it'll only take 500 bamboo stalks in an automatic farm like so to produce more items than a hopper can actually process. Meaning that this simple farm produces more than two and a half items per second. Usually when you craft something out of wood, it'll look like it's made of oak. But there are exceptions to that. Like how item frames and fletching tables look like they're made of birch. Barrels look closest to spruce, cartography tables and grindstones have a dark oak base, and things like chests and jukeboxes don't look like any wooden plank. But sadly, acacia is left out. If you place TNT over a slab and then ignite it, it will have a much smaller blast radius than if you explode it on the ground. In fact, there are cases where only the slab will be destroyed, leaving the rest of the block safe. And I wouldn't worry about this getting patched anytime soon, since it's been open and unresolved on the bug tracker since 2014. If you look closely, you'll notice that bedrock and stone look very similar. And the reason is that in all versions, the bedrock texture is just a very high contrast version of the stone texture. And this is true whether using the current textures or the old programmer art textures. But hey, the same is basically true for endstone and cobblestone, so it's fair. If you get a mob to stand on top of a cake, it'll just keep rotating in place, completely unable to move. And this is due to a pathfinding oversight in their AI code, which is why the same thing happens on fences as well. How many items does it take for an iron pressure plate to give a full redstone signal of 15? Well, if we throw all the items on there in total, it would take 9 stacks and 22 items minimum, or just shy of 600 items. Or, you know, use a redstone torch. Minecraft veterans remember a time where we didn't need to use blaze powder to brew up our potions. So, why did this change? Well, according to one of the game's developers, Sarge, it's so that the game's progression wouldn't be thrown off. Since when they added in igloos, it would have been less important to go to the nether if you could just find a brewing stand right underneath one in the overworld. Here's how you get wool in a desert. Now that sounds ridiculous, since you're not going to find any sheep out here, but back in one Point three, it was possible since desert temples generated with wool for the colourful bits. Though when terracotta was added in as hardened clay, those patterns were quickly replaced. And as a matter of fact, if you were to break every piece of terracotta in a naturally spawned desert temple, you'd be left with 55 pieces. 54 of them orange and one blue from the centre. These gears used to be in vanilla Minecraft. See, in the Java Edition in-dev phase, there were these flat gears that could only be broken by letting water into them or exploding it. And if you tried to break them like a normal block, it would just break the block behind.
behind them. And maybe that's why this buggy feature never made it into the official game. This light block is the only high definition texture in Minecraft. At least it was. Before the texture changed in Snapshot 21W18A, the Java Edition light blocks had a 32 by 32 texture instead of the 16 by 16 that we're used to. If you take a close look at any of the Minecraft doors, you'll notice that they have two sets of hinges on the opposite sides, instead of just one functional hinge. And while that might seem like a bug or mistake, Mojang did confirm on the bug tracker that this is actually intentional. And if you look at the comments, it seems like some players aren't too happy about that. Sorry, Connor, I don't think they're going to fix it. Did you know Steve can sprint twice as fast as a full speed minecart? Sure enough, if you were to sprint jump on a blue ice tunnel filled with trapdoors like so, it's possible that the player can move at a top speed of 18 and a half blocks per second. And if you were to build this in the nether, we can consider it eight times faster than the overworld. But doing that will cause your hunger bar to drop just as quickly. So bring plenty of steak for the journey. When they were first added, Minecraft saplings used to look like this. They were only two colors, just tan and green. But only six days later, they were given a new texture that looks a lot more like how they look today. What's the difference between this fence gate and this one that we have right here? Well, it's hard to notice, but when you place a fence gate next to a wall, it'll stoop down a little bit lower to match the height of the cobblestone wall. But what the cobblestone walls lack in size, they more than make up for in volume. And in fact, if you were to craft a stack of cobblestone into cobblestone walls, you'd be left with exactly enough walls to fence off one 16 by 16 chunk. Why is this pattern called Thing? Well, it's not just Mojang being humble. There's actually a good reason for it. If you were to translate the word Mojang from Swedish, it would roughly translate to the words gadget, doohickey, or thing. According to Notch, torches were supposed to burn out after a while, but this never made it into the official game. However, if you play the Java Edition 2.0 snapshot, they do just that. And you'll even need a flint and steel just to reignite them once they burn out, which is annoying, so let's just hope this stays as an April Fool's joke. This is not a light gray shulker box. At least it wasn't in snapshot 16w39b, but rather in this experimental build, it was referred to as a silver shulker box instead. And understandably, it was changed just the day after to match the standard names of the die. And while we're talking about light gray, I'd like you to take a look at this stained glass pane. Can't see it? Well, that's actually the point. Since the texture is flat and the inventory screen is light gray, it's almost impossible to see a single light gray stained glass pane like this. And according to Mojang, that's intentional. What's the most fuel you can put in a furnace? Well, even though a lava bucket is the single best item, if you put in a full stack of coal blocks, it can smell for over 14 hours straight, which is just over 42 full Minecraft days of smelting. That's more than 50 times better than a single lava bucket. But you would need 576 coal to do this, so better get fortune on your pickaxe. Before we even got concrete confirmed for the snapshots, Jeb first showed off the concept in a video posted in February 2017. And in this clip, we see an early texture for the pink concrete powder and how it would eventually harden on impact with water. Back in Java Edition Classic, when you broke a wood log, it would drop the planks instead of the actual block, which seems more like mine than craft to me. And moving from logs to the nether counterparts, you'll notice that the crimson and warped stem blocks are the only logs in the game that have an animation. I would bet that most of you have never experienced this Minecraft fact, because frankly, I hadn't either. But if you were to press a button next to a bell, there is a chance for the bell to play its ringing sound in reverse, much like this. At some point, it was possible for Endermen to move around and place cactus blocks, meaning it was theoretically possible for enough Endermen to increase the population of cacti in a desert and keep planting more as they grow, which is just as terrifying as it sounds, trust me. Maybe they made the really tall cactus from earlier. It turns out, piglins are the reason that there's no more netherite ore in the game, only the ancient debris that we're left with. At least, that's according to this official Minecraft article for 1.16. In this, it says that pure netherite ore no longer exists, since the piglins mined it all out of the nether, which pegs the question, why would they switch from netherite to gold tools? So clearly they're not that smart. If you were to try to use your diamond pick to mine a block of obsidian underwater while not standing on solid ground, it would take you just shy of four minutes at 234 seconds. And for that effort, just place a door and do it in 9.4 seconds. Back in the survival test for Java Edition, when you would mine gold ore, it would drop one to three golden blocks instead of golden ingots of the ore itself. And if only it still worked that way, huh? But here's the real question for you. Which came first, gold or diamond? Well, not only did gold come first, but the diamond block's texture is just the same as the block of gold, but with a bluish tint. And that's true with the old programmer art and the new textures that came with 1.14's texture update. 809 quadrillion. That sounds like a big number, but it's actually how many uniquely crafted banner patterns there are. With 16 blank banners, 38 patterns of 16 colors each, and up to six patterns per banner, we can get this giant number. Though that includes a lot of duplicates because these two inverted patterns do look the same, but they count as separate entries and don't stand 
back. Lecterns were added in 1.14, but Tinderbone wanted them in the game much sooner. In fact, back in 2012, Tinderbone talked about a way to add in a stand that would make it easier to read the written books. But after various complications, the idea was scrapped, and it wouldn't return until 2019, seven years later. This might look like a crate, but it's actually a piston. See, in older versions of the game, it was possible to do a glitch called block update suppression. And with this, we could make this weird piston block that has a piston head on all sides. And hey, the same was possible for sticky pistons too. In vanilla Minecraft, it's entirely possible to have a candle that's lit on fire, even when it's underwater. And with the MBT tags like so, we can summon in that candle. Or if you're in Java, just use a debug stick like so. You know you can make stairs out of netherite. It's a big flex, but in the April Fool's Infinite Snapshot, there was a special stair block called the swaggiest stairs ever. And to get these, they'd only naturally generate in the so-called missing dimension. So don't expect this in vanilla anytime soon. Now, why is this quartz block better than this one? Well, by default, quartz blocks have a low blast resistance. But if you were to use two quartz slabs or a smooth quartz block instead, you can make a substantially stronger four than the alternative, all without sacrificing the look of the regular quartz. TNT doesn't explode underwater, but if you add sodium to it, you get this special underwater TNT. And this blue variant only exists in the Education Edition. Though, to do this in other versions, just place a sand block above TNT, ignite it, and explode underwater just the same. According to the official Minecraft Combat Handbook, you can make an infinite lava source if you were to make a cross shape of nether bricks and then add lava to the middle. Okay, but that's obviously fake. Man, even Tinderbone confirmed that it was false. But even though this did come out in 2014, we would eventually get renewable lava when we got the dripstones and the caves and cliffs update. So the concept's true, but this is just a blatant lie. Every time that you place a coral block in Minecraft, Mojang donated one cent to charity. After Bedrock players had placed 10 million coral blocks underwater, Mojang decided to donate 100,000 US dollars to the Nature Conservancy Project. And while I'm not so sure if they're still offering that, I will say that we'll do the same. So for every new subscriber that we get from this video, we'll donate one dollar to the Nature Conservancy, up to a thousand people. So by just hitting that red button, you can help to protect coral reefs all around the world. And if you're already subscribed, don't unsubscribe and resubscribe. Just use your mom, dad, brother, sister's phone, whatever, and have them subscribe so that we can turn our coral reefs from this into this. And with that, folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video. So see if they're right and have a good one. All right.